Thank you, guys. That was beautiful. Thanks for that. Um, good morning. It's good to see you all this morning um, as we enter uh, the month of February and um, make our way through the last couple of Sundays of the season of Epiphany and on our way uh, in just about 10 days or so to Lent, believe it or not. Um, As we do, we continue uh, reflecting a bit on some of the sections of Mark's gospel, the the gospel for this uh, liturgical year. And um, this morning, Mark tells us that Jesus is in the region around the Sea of Galilee, and he's traveling from synagogue to synagogue, teaching and healing and proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom, of God's hope and and dream for the world. And following a meeting in the synagogue, they make their way to the home of Simon and to Andrew, and um, they're accompanied by James and John. And Mark tells us that Simon's mother-in-law is sick and um, bedridden with terrible fever. And Simon mentions his mother-in-law's illness to Jesus, And when they arrive at the house, uh, Jesus goes in to see her. He takes her by the hand, he raises her up, helps her stand on her own two feet, and with her fever gone, she begins to serve her guests. Later in the evening, after they had finished dinner, they they brought the sick, the afflicted, the, the weak, the hopeless, the struggling to Jesus. And Mark says, it seemed as if the whole city had lined up outside the door of the house. And with compassion and love, Jesus cared for them. When the crowd began to die down, and while it was still night, Jesus uh, went, went out to a secluded place by himself to pray. And Simon and the others went looking for him. And when they found him, they said, everybody is looking for you. Everybody was looking for Jesus. Some to have their bodies uh, healed. Others, their minds put at ease. Their worries and fears calmed. Their sins forgiven. Their hopes fulfilled. Looking for Jesus to give them peace chance to begin again, um, uh, uh, an opportunity for a, a new and more abundant life. And today, probably, some, just right outside our door, are looking for the very same, looking for Jesus. I, I love this passage in part because um, Jesus teaches the message of God's kingdom, of God's hope and dream for the world. Um, just prior to this, he's, we're told he taught as one with authority. And then, having taught that message, he lives it. Uh, not only talking about um, mercy and love and grace and liberation, but, but actually healing and liberating and forgiving and offering life and hope and new beginnings. And then he goes off by himself to a place to pray. It's a a, a pattern or a rhythm of of life that will repeat itself over and over again in the Gospels. And one that we could learn from. Offer compassion, serve, and pray. Offer compassion, serve, and pray. Jesus' life had balance. Balance. Um, He went away for prayer and communion with God, and he served those in need. And we are called to to have that same kind of balance. And when we find it, that, that sacred equilibrium, we become ourselves good news for all those who are looking for Jesus. So Mark here offers a kind of snapshot of what ministry looks like for those who are following Christ. Learning, growing, teaching, and a life of prayer accompanied by healing, works of justice, works of mercy, 
Um, healing, compassion, feeding, caring. It's all here in, in the way of life to which we are called as Christ's disciples. Uh, a balance of works of piety and works of mercy. And, and it is, however, easy, I'm aware of this tendency, especially for those of us who, who lead in the church or who spend a lot of time in the church. It is very easy within these walls of being church together to lose sight of that balance. We, because we, we spend a lot of time and energy and resources on trying to strengthen the church um, equip the church, providing opportunities and programs and ministries. And, and we need to do this. We're called to build up the body of Christ, but never to the neglect of those who are outside our doors looking for Jesus. Because the church exists not for itself, but for the life of the world. For all those out there today longing for, looking for, searching for hope, for healing, for a chance to, to be welcomed and belong. And, and we're called, friends, when we find that sacred balance, to live lives that point them to Jesus. One writer puts it this way, the church is not automatically a Christ body community. A church becomes the body of Christ when it continues Christ's mission in the world and embraces being the greatest source of goodness, truth, and beauty in its zip code. The church, a community of faith, becomes the body of Christ when it is committed to being the greatest source of, of goodness, truth, and beauty in its zip code. It doesn't say God so loved the church or God so loved the Christians, but God so loved the world. All of those beyond these walls and us who are looking for Jesus. And Methodism at its best um, has always been about finding that sacred balance uh, between going away to a secluded place to pray and then serving the world those in need. Having a, a, a holiness of heart and mind that then leads us to holiness of life. Leaving our secluded and safe places of prayer to go and engage the world with the good news of God's love. The, to live a faithful life, Joan Chittister says, to live a faithful life, a spiritual life, doesn't mean that we spend life in some kind of sacred spa or, or a retreat designed to save us from having to deal with the down and dirty parts of life. Rather, the, the, the real prayer is immersion in the God who created us for the world. And so we must do whatever justice and mercy must be done in our time if we claim to be serious about really sinking into the heart of God. We must be, as Merton says, willing to work for the things for which we pray. Jesus went away to pray. I, I find that remarkable that the very, the Son of God, the embodiment of God in the flesh, went away to pray. Which says something to us about how important it is that we go away to pray. And then, when the disciples came bringing the hurting, dying world to his door, he got up, he moved out among them, and he offered hope and life. Jesus comes even to you and me today to, to offer us that same hope and life. Um, and to call us to join him beyond these walls, into the world for all of those who are searching for Jesus. I came, Christ says, so that you might not only draw close to God, but that you might draw close to those in need and share with them my light and my love.
We all know that while we sit here, while I'm in the pulpit, while we sing, while we pray, while we worship, while we, while we gather at the Lord's table, there are in the chapel, the way we're oriented over there for worship, you can see out on the main street. And just as I said this, a car drove by as if, you know, I had planned it. I told them I had Kim out riding around up and down the street. To, uh, but cars going by, I can see them. You can sometimes see the flashes of light through the stained glass windows. Uh, people walking by, they have a name, they have a story. Um, may, they may not know much about God, they may not care about God, they may have a relationship with God, they may have connection to a church or no connection to the church. But they're the ones um, Jesus speaks of when he says, for God so loved the world. It's not only the Christians, but, but all of them as well. Single mothers, fathers who've lost their jobs, um, maybe feel like they've left their, their kids down because they haven't been the father they've been able, they would like to be, folks struggling with addiction, um, homeless, poor, rich, um, downhearted, successful, all of them, grieving, lonely, the ones who are longing for God, the ones who believe God doesn't even exist, all of them, right at our door, right at our door. We can speak in general about who they are, that keeps it safe, right, that keeps it kind of up here at this level, uh, where we just think about it, um, but um, but we, we also know their names. You work with them, you go to school with them, you live beside them. We know the names and the faces of that world standing at the door looking for Jesus, for something better, for something more, for a little hope, for a place to belong. Um, so today, your homework is just think of a name face and hold it in your heart and mind this week everybody's looking for Jesus the disciples said who do you know that might be searching um, remember them this week ask God what you can do to be a means of God's love and grace for them ask God to open the door of opportunity for you to listen to hear their story. Everyone wants to be heard, friends. Ask God to open the door of opportunity for you to come alongside, to be a neighbor, not to correct them, not to point out how they're wrong about God and the Christian faith, uh, but to just be Christ with and for them. Uh, just as Jesus was the presence of God for us, leaving his quiet place to pray, taking on the weight of the world on the cross, embracing us all, showing us what love looks like. Everybody's looking for Jesus. The whole world, the disciples said, like the whole city's lined up at your door. What small thing might God be calling us to do today when we leave this place of prayer? To whom are we being sent? You know them. You know them. And the question is, are we willing to take a, just a little risk to be the greatest source of goodness and truth and beauty in all our zip codes? What a different 2024 it might be if we dared to be that church, to be the greatest source of goodness, beauty, and truth in all the places we live and work and play. May it be so. Amen.